Next up, we have uh, Dr. Divya Rao uh, representing Remedio. Uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Divya. Hi, everyone. Is my screen visible? Yeah, we can see the screen. Um, firstly, thank you so much, Dr. Amit and Dr. Banshi Sahu and the team for giving me an opportunity to speak today. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm an ophthalmologist, um, a glaucoma specialist uh, who worked at LV Prasad Eye Institute as a clinician scientist before I pivoted uh, into the industry working at the intersection of ophthalmology and technology. And I'm leading the clinical efforts at Remedio, where uh, we are looking to develop portable, simple to use solutions uh, to improve access to eye care screening. Um, so, the, so what I'll be discussing today is how are we looking to transform diabetic eye disease screening with a smartphone based easy to use offline AI. So uh, what is diabetic eye disease? Basically, it's a group of uh, ocular conditions that affects those with diabetes. And this includes diabetic retinopathy, diabetic macular edema, cataracts, and glaucoma. We already have uh, an, the world's first offline AI that can detect diabetic retinopathy on a portable handheld fundus camera that's in use for the past two years now. And um, now what we have developed is an AI solution that can also detect glaucoma, which is what I will be speaking and highlighting today. So the obvious next questions are, what is glaucoma? Why should a physician and a diabetologist screen for glaucoma? Is this really beneficial? What tests do I use? What do I look for? And who should I refer? So let's just go over all of these quickly. Um, glaucoma is basically a chronic progressive optic neuropathy, and it's characterized by structural changes in the optic nerve associated with visual field, concomitant visual field effects. So in simple terms, optic nerve is a cable that connects the eye to the brain, and um, this if left untreated can lead to visual loss and blindness. So while there are several risk factors for glaucoma, diabetes mellitus is one of them. And uh, we all know that it's one of the leading causes of irreversible blindness. And what is very alarming is 90% of those with glaucoma remains undetected in developing countries. While the prevalence of glaucoma is around about 2%, you can see that those with uh, in those with diabetes, this automatically jumps to about five percent. So literally, there's a double; it's a doubling of the chance of glaucoma in those with diabetes. Um, there are two different forms of glaucoma that you're at risk for. One is called as a primary open angle glaucoma, and another is a very complex, aggressive. Um, secondary glaucoma called as neovascular glaucoma that is very uh, commonly seen in these patients with severe diabetic retinopathy. In fact, almost 50% of those with neovascular glaucoma is due to those with a very advanced form of diabetic retinopathy called as proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And this is very difficult to manage with higher failure rates of intervention. So what is the role of a physician here? Um, as we all know, diabetologists are the basically the have a pivotal role in managing these patients, and they are a primary contact for managing a diabetic patient. So this gives an opportunity to screen these patients early for diabetic eye disease and follow them over time. So there are several models that have been looked at in terms of diabetic retinopathy screening itself, and it has been accepted in India and world over the teleophthalmology screening models using non-mediatic fundus cameras and having teleophthalmology graders or using AI is an acceptable solution now globally. And uh, in fact, there are two FDA approved algorithms for diabetic retinopathy, which is already now in use. And the only way that we can actually bridge the gap between the low doctor population ratio and to screen for these conditions is the use of technology like AI. So for glaucoma, basically, 
to make a diagnosis it's a combination of tests which looks at intraocular pressure looks at structural changes in the eye and also at functional changes while we have sort of solved the problem of having of use of developing portable devices for intraocular pressure and functional changes where you're actually trying to see what part of the visual field is lost structural changes is still an issue and there are limitations in terms of technology that have been developed like portable solutions with integrated ai and currently there's no single cost effective device that is ideal alone for screening so what has our approach been for uh, screening for glaucoma so we understand that optic nerve head evaluation is the mainstay for looking at structural changes and uh, we have a fl flagship product which is the remedios fundus on phone device which can actually capture images of the back of the eye without dilating the patient's pupil um and on this device which also has an ai for diabetic retinopathy now we have also developed a solution that can detect those with likely glaucoma so in effect it's bringing objectivity to diagnosis and can improve access to those um who have uh, improve access to screening so the novelty of this solution is with one device you can actually screen for both diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma simultaneously so here is a quick video on how um the ai app, you know is deployed on the phone it's very simple you take one image per eye um you select the images submit it to the ai for analysis and literally within few seconds it will give you a report whether there is presence of referable glaucoma or not and it will also highlight areas which are abnormal so to give you a quick overview of how this algorithm develops so um what are the components of this algorithm so you click an image of the back of the eye uh, with a portable handheld fundus camera and a quality check algorithm will give you a feedback whether the image is of sufficient quality or not or an image needs to be retaken then there are two separate neural networks that run one is a segmentation model which gives you a measurement called a cup to disc ratio and this is what an ophthalmologist uses um as a critical measurement in relation to the optic disc size to make a diagnosis for glaucoma and second is a classification model that looks at several other features in the optic disc to make a recommendation for re referral along with what we call as class activation maps so basically this is how the report looks on the left side and in the center is what you see there is an outline of the optic cup and the optic disc and you actually get a measurement called the vertical cup to disc ratio and what you see on the right side is what we call as class activation maps and these maps actually highlight the areas which are abnormal which if which the model has used to make a diagnosis and this is actually looking at typical features that a ophthalmologist would look at to make a diagnosis for example here you see a very subtle retinal nerve fiber layer defect that has been picked up by the ai so what do these reports really mean for a physician so if the report says referable glaucoma it means that the patient has likely glaucoma and needs an immediate referral to an ophthalmologist and the report says it's a dis suspect that means that you know there is an abnormal vcd and needs a non urgent referral so how is this ai actually he helping it's Dr. empowering Dr. just a quick uh, time check sorry talk now just a quick time check uh, if yeah. we could conclude in the next 30 seconds to accommodate for some questions really sorry for uh, the interview yeah yeah sure Good absolutely uh yeah so this is basically empowering a physician to make an objective diagnosis and to move a patient into an eye care pathway early the novelty is that it's affordable it's simple to use and it's an integrated solution for both diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma it's been validated in prospective studies before being commercialized and it's basically adding value it's a value based care that a physician can provide to improve outcomes and in the west of course it can be reimbursed and is used as a measure to improve hedis scores 
I will not go into the details, but as we did for the diabetic retinopathy algorithm, this algorithm has been validated in clinical trials with excellent agreement to objective diagnosis and has also shown to be very close to what a glaucoma specialist would provide um, as a diagnosis. So in, in conclusion, now AI-based systems have the potential to screen for diabetic eye disease and can screen for diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma simultaneously. They're quick, reliable, and objective and can empower physicians to provide value-based care and can overall improve healthcare efficiency by moving eye care screening away from ophthalmologists. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rao. Do we have any questions uh, yes. from the faculty? Uh, I have a couple of questions which we have got from the participants. Dr. Divya, I think the idea is uh, very, very good. And uh, you have actually shown that because this was a very big limitation. And uh, because we were able to, even when we were examining the fundus, earlier we used to use the simple fundus camera, uh, handheld fundus camera, uh, thermic device to look for the uh, retinopathy. But what happened is that now we are using the AI-based devices and all. And many a times it is uh, it happens that we need to dilate the patient. The patient often asks about us that you are telling only about the retinopathy, but cataract is something which we can tell without even any device. The clinical examination can tell. But uh, the examination of the glaucoma is something which is difficult, difficult for a physician. Uh, for uh, in a ophthalmic practice, it is not something like that. So for a physician, I think it really adds a lot of value to our clinical examination because we are able not only to detect the retinopathy, but also we are going to detect the glaucoma as well. So I think uh, glaucoma is also having a hidden burden. Uh, again, it, uh, it is one of the leading cause of blindness and again, it is a preventable cause of blindness. So I, I think it brings a lot of value to my practice. So uh, what do you suggest uh, that how this device should be integrated in clinical practice? So um, the device, as you uh, rightly mentioned, Dr. Amit, is a handheld fundus camera. So all that needs to be done is when you're seeing your patient in the clinic, take an image of the back of the eye and, um, you know, automatically the AI would tell you whether image quality is good or not. And you basically hit a button and you will know whether there is diabetic retinopathy or glaucoma and the report will automatically tell you whether you need to refer the patient to an ophthalmologist. So in clinical practice, it is very easy to integrate it into the workflow that is already there because you can literally have that camera in your OPD setup and click an image of the back of the eye. Can I see something? Yes, yeah, sure, doctor. Yeah, so actually being an ophthalmologist's wife. Um, okay. Yeah, 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 my husband is an ophthalmologist. So I think it, it definitely adds value because glaucoma, we do not talk to our patients much. We talk about retinopathy all the time. And when we send them across to see uh, 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 the pressures, yeah, the pressures some do sometimes come high. What I want to understand from this device is, uh, would it uh, even uh, catch hold of uh, minor changes in the pressures or is it only when the pressures are really high or if there is a cupping or something it's discovered or it's only the minor, the, the initial changes and the pressures also caught up here? Yeah, great question, Dr. Ami. So for a diagnosis of glaucoma, I completely agree. You need a battery. This as a replacement for intraocular pressure, this is looking at what changes that occur at the back of the eye. As far as what we have found now in our clinical studies is that it's able to pick um, early glaucoma, moderate as well as advanced. So um, as of now, I wouldn't definitely say this is a replacement for intraocular pressure. But I think the approach is a bit different here. What we're trying to do is with one fundus image, how can we screen for multiple conditions, both diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma with, with a good enough accuracy and move them to the care pathway early. Uh, Dr. Devi, just one more question, which is coming uh, from Dr. Ami, that can we predict uh, and identify those who are at risk of developing glaucoma from this device? So as of now, it is not having a risk score where you can actually predict who could develop glaucoma. As of now, this tool is detecting those who have the highest likelihood of having glaucoma currently. 
but what we are looking to develop in the future is um some quantitative measurements on this tool which could potentially identify glaucoma even more early but as of now it's good to identify those who have glaucoma right now at least is it can exclude those who don't have uh, disc changes or those who don't yes, have any exactly. advanced stages of the glaucoma so along Absolutely. with the fundus examination we also can comment that there is no existing damage on the uh, retina or the disc as such the glaucoma is concerned absolutely right. because uh, the clinical study also showed that the specificity of those with no glaucoma is very high meaning to say that there would hardly be any patients with no glaucoma being referred which is what we really want as well while it is very sensitive you also need it to be very specific so that you're not overburdening the system by over referring patients so the, ne the negative predictive value is very high right Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the time and the opportunity. Thank you.